Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you a size 20 parachute atoms. Well, it's not exactly an atoms, but the first atoms wasn't exactly a parachute fly either. So I took a few liberties here. I'm going to tie this fly on a size 20 Mustad hook. These were a um, an estate sale find, I believe. And they took me back a ways because this is the way we used to get our hooks way back in the day when we used to order everything. And they came in cardboard boxes and wax paper. So we're going to use poly yarn for the wing, some super fine dubbing, and cocktail Leon fibers for the tail. I'm going to tie the bulk of this fly with the ADOT uni thread in gray. And then I'm going to switch to this Orvis 12 aught. It's a very fine white thread um, when I tie off the hackle around the post. So we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get there. So here we're getting that tiny size 20 uh, hook in the vise. And yeah, when I say it took me back, we used to order everything online. They may have actually come from Norway. It took weeks to order and actually get our materials. And we'd wait by the mailbox and be all excited when that package arrived. And we could go dig through and see what we got. So we got the thread started. I left a little room uh, just behind the eye. Took it back to the hook point. I'm going to tie in a bundle of those um, Coq de Leon fibers. There are about 12 there. You have to use a few more than you would otherwise. These are from the, I bought a Coq de Leon neck, the entire neck. And the fibers on that are thinner than if you just bought a tailing pack. I'm not sure why that is, or um, if those are just select fibers in the tailing pack or feathers in the tailing pack and the fibers are thicker. But I noticed you have to use a few more fibers when you're using these, these hackle fibers here. So we'll get started with a thin noodle of the um, super fine dubbing. And one point here, it's a long staple dubbing. And it, when you're doing um, thin noodles, it, it wants to kind of wrap and buff, I don't know, twist up around the thread and not necessarily dub around the thread correctly. And you can use tiny little bits and roll them around. Uh, one trick I do, though, is to, um, when I pull it out, I cut the length. I'll cut it in half and um, maybe in thirds and then it's shorter and it'll wrap better for me around the hook so we got back there to just in front of the tail worked our way forward and have a nice um, tapered uh, body and that trimming or cutting of those uh, fibers makes it a little easier to take off the excess otherwise you have to do a lot of unwinding and I can see even trimmed in half, some of those fibers are still pretty long. So we'll get a small bundle of those polypropylene uh, yarn fibers. I'll get back to where I want to tie in the wing. And it wants to slip there, so we'll have to use a pinch wrap. And I'm just going to go straight across with three wraps. And then I'm going to build my post on top of that. On these tiny flies, I don't think there's a, le a lot of leverage. and I'm not too worried about <clears throat> um, you know, the post moving on me. But I don't want to build too much bulk here either. So I'm kind of passing the bobbin around as I wind up that, that post and then back down. Pull a little tighter on the way back down. And then when I get down around the bottom, we'll get a couple of wraps, maybe a couple of extra wraps around the hook there to kind of firm things up. And that's some Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. It's a little on the thick side. I'm noticing uh, where I'm trying to use such a little dab of it that it's not actually soaking in. So we'll try and get the, the post covered and <clears throat> wipe off the excess. I saw a spot near the back I wanted to add a little bit. I'm not sure looking at this blown up on the screen that I actually did what I was set out to do there, but that works. 
Now one thing here, a quick wrap in front and in back of this hackle will hold it and then I'll stand it up and wrap it to the post. I'm not going to go all the way up at this point and we'll talk about that a little more when I'm actually wrapping the hackle. So sorry about all the primping there. I can see that one fiber and it's driving me crazy. So we have to get that out of there. And I don't know why, because I don't think it actually would have done anything. It just bothered me that it didn't stay together with the other ones. And for now, we're back to dubbing. <clears throat> so we make an, another short noodle. Noodles may be an inch and a half, two inches long. And like I said, I took liberties here. This is just all gray, um, super fine dubbing. I I did set out I was going to use a quill bodied version of this, uh, like Charlie Craven likes to do. And um, but under the circumstances, I was experimenting with different methods of tying off hackles, and I did make a couple of quill bodied flies, and then I kind of ran out of the quills and. Still didn't like the methods of tying off the hackle that I liked. So I settled for just making dub bodies. And basically, I think I tied four of the, counting this one, tied four of these flies all together. And this is where I landed. So I'm going to whip finish behind the eye of the hook. Some of these, especially these older hooks, they have a little gap there. They have sharp edges behind the hook. And I don't like not having the extra thread wraps there. So we'll build a little head and whip finish and snip the thread out of the way. And there's one strand, one filament from that thread that kind of got away there that didn't cut cleanly. So I'm going to get rid of that too. And we're going to move the hook in the vise so that the uh, post is sticking straight out. And we're wrapping more or less like you would around a hook shank in the conventional sense. So one thing I want to point out here, I'm going to pull that hackle away from the post. And I want to back out a little bit so we can see this a little better. But I want to pull that out away from the post. And then when I tie that other thread, the Orvis fine thread back in, um, the hackle's held, it's out of the way, and it's already in the hackle pliers. So I'm going to start near the top of the post and work my way down. And one of the things, and I'll point this out too, one of the things I'm going to do here is, um, a la Tim Flagler, I'm going to wind that hackle um, behind the thread to help keep the thread, or the hackle wraps bunched against the body of this fly. And that's one thing here too, and I, I hinted about trying different methods. So it was, uh, one method was to do your whip finish below the hackle, between the body and the hackle. And I didn't like that. It leaves a band of thread there that kind of bothers me. So I had in my head that this was better. I can wrap the hackle right against that, the bulbous thorax there. And then as I work with this and as I go, I'm realizing that just like on a hook shank, you're going to want to push the, um, there, block the camera cuff. Um, you're going to want to push the fibers down so that you don't uh, trap too many up toward the post or you want to definitely leave enough like splayed out around the the post so we'll get a couple of wraps of thread over that and i can manhandle this so i captured the uh, tip of the hackle and the post and i can get two pretty tight wraps right there and then i'm going to whip fi whip finish And shortly here, I realized that the post is pretty long and it's going to be in the way. So I can plan for that next time and snip the excess out of the way. And then we'll go and whip finish. And then taking a little care here not to trap too many fibers. Although I do like when some of the fibers point up. It kind of darkens the base of that post. I don't know, it's not a bad look. So 
So I'm going to pull the thread, and I'm just, I'm not snipping here, I'm just pushing those against the thread. Then we'll separate out, and I don't even know how important this would be. You could probably leave that hackle as you cut the post, but I'm going to separate out that piece of hackle and just snip it off. I did the same thing. I pushed it. So that left some of those hackle fibers um, laying parallel with the post. So we just kind of fan it out a little bit. I don't like to cut these straight off. I, the fly looks a little too manufactured, so I try and get them on a little bit of an angle. And I think it's pretty important, especially on the parachute flies, to get a good drop of head cement down in there and let it soak in and kind of glue all this together. So this is where I landed. This is how I'm doing the, the small parachute flies. Um, I think that if those wraps, they spread out a little bit, and if they were below the hackle, I don't think I would like that as much. I like that darkness at the bottom of those wraps above on the post. And um, I don't think the fish care about any of this, but this is what I like right now, and I'm going to keep experimenting. So thanks for watching, and uh, if you hung in there to the end and you want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon. And until next time, be safe.